A family is sailing to North America when a huge storm floods the entire ship, making it sink. A teenage boy is the only survivor while he loses his entire family and gets stuck on a lifeboat with a vicious animal. Let's follow this boy on an unfortunate journey through the Pacific Ocean. A writer approaches Pai Patel and claims that his life story will make a great novel. And we are taken back into Pai's life. His father named him Piscine based on a swimming pool in France. But this made him a target for his fellow classmates as they call him P. He one day declares that his name is Pi, but they still don't respect him. When Pi finally resorts to demonstrating the constant mathematical value of Pi on numerous boards, he earns respect from both students and teachers. As a kid growing up in a Hindu family where his mother is a botanist and his father owns a zoo, he deemed the Hindu god as his ideal. But he soon gets introduced to other religions and starts following all of them while also being a vegetarian. His father, who is a huge believer in science, remarks that Pi can't follow all the beliefs. If he does, he is not a believer in even one of the religions. This doesn't hinder Pi's experimental philosophy as he believes that all the beings on earth have a soul, and even a beast would not hurt others if he wasn't threatened. One day, he sneaks in with his brother to see a tiger in their zoo named Parker. His brother informs their father, who rushes to put a stop to Pi as he tries to offer Parker some meat. And TikTok is full of videos like these. To demonstrate how vicious the tiger is, his father instructs his worker to put a goat in front of the cage, and the tiger takes no time in devouring it. His father successfully managed to scar a memory in Pi's life. As parents do, Pi grows up to be an avid reader of great philosophy. One day he notices a Kathak dancer named Anandi and is mesmerized by her. He approaches and asks the meaning of one of her dance moves. Anandi explains that it means the lotus flower is hiding in the woods. Following this, the two talk more often and get closer, as Pi also brings her to see Parker. Later, Pi learns that his father is suffering losses in his zoo, so he has decided to sell the animals to North America, while the whole family will be migrating to Canada. Pi isn't happy with the decision, but his father is certain about it. As he says his goodbye to Anandi, they spend some good time together, and she ties a thread around his wrist. The red thread in Indian culture is a symbol of protection. As the family sails to North America, Pai's mother has some trouble with the chef, who refuses to make vegetarian food for her. Pai's father retaliates, but the family settles for only eating rice. A Buddhist sailor approaches their table and remarks that meat gravy is still vegetarian, but the family respectfully denies having it. Later that night, a huge storm brews near the boat. Pi delightedly gets out on the deck to witness the wonder and screams at the sky to be louder. The sky obeys and screams so loudly that the storm shakes the entire ship. Now scared, Pi rushes to find his family as the water has overflowed the ship, but their compartment is already flooded. He then gets outside where the team is lowering a safety boat. In a bit of panic, Pi is thrown into the boat, and right after, a zebra falls over, separating the boat from the ship as it floats away. Pi keeps whistling towards the ship in vain. He then sees someone floating toward him, and gets closer to see that it's Parker. Scared for his life, he jumps off the boat into the sea to witness the wreck that the ship has become. Realizing that there is no way back, he swims to the lifeboat again, where he holds onto the boat's end, constantly screaming for his parents. The next morning, he only finds the zebra on the boat and removes the water from it. 
A hyena soon gets out of the tarpaulin and Pi rushes back to the end of the boat in fear. He soon notices an orangutan swimming in some bananas. Pi helps her get into the boat and asks where her kids are. In response, she sadly looks towards the sea. At night, the hyena starts to attack the zebra, and despite the orangutan and Pi trying to stop it, the zebra is killed. Pi finds a survival guide for the sea, along with various supplies. He uses the supplies to fashion a small raft for himself that he ties to the boat. The hyena now starts attacking the orangutan and sadly kills her as well. This enrages Pi, who is ready to wage a war against the hyena, when Parker suddenly bursts out from under the tarpaulin and kills the hyena. This scares the life out of Pi, and he rushes to the raft he had made. Pi later sneaks inside to get the remaining supplies while Parker is asleep. As he eats the canned food, Pi notices a rat rummaging in the supplies. Parker suddenly awakens and scares Pi, who throws a rat at him before jumping off the boat. Pi endlessly cries through the night, and as the morning arrives, the sea looks as if Pi is floating in heaven with the reflection of the sky. Pi then writes a letter, puts it in a can, and throws it into the sea. He then reads the survival guide and learns various skills, like collecting drinking water and shaking the boat to make Parker seasick. Pi even attempts to divide the boat territory by peeing, but Parker showers him with his own gift. To save himself from Parker's hunger, Pi learns to fish to feed him. Parker amuses him by swimming around in the sea to hunt for fish, although he fails to catch any. As Parker is in the water, Pi takes the chance to go inside the boat. Parker tries to get into the boat, which is too high for him to climb. Pi attempts to hit Parker before leaving, but looks into his eyes. He fails to do that. Later, he lowers the boat to let Parker climb and goes back to his raft. Soon, Pi manages to catch a fish and starts to sob after having to kill the beautiful creature. He thanks God for helping him with the fish and whistles for Parker to have his meal. Later one night, Pi watches the brilliant view of jellyfish swimming near the boat when a whale feeding on the jellyfish dives near him and knocks the boat over. The impact spills all the necessary supplies into the water. Talk about having a bad day. Now living with a scarcity of food, the boat is suddenly bombarded with flying fish when a huge fish also jumps over the boat in attempt to eat the small fish. Pi manages to grab the fish away from Parker and eat the raw meat for the first time. He uses the fish meat to train Parker to accept him in the boat, and the two start getting used to each other's company. As he writes a journal, Pi realizes that taking care of the tiger is helping him keep alive as well. A while later, Pi notices a ship passing by. He immediately fires a gun, but fails to get noticed. Several days pass without anyone coming for help, but Pi still manages to keep his cool. One evening, Pi hallucinates while looking at the sea, where he sees glimpses of his memory and even his mother's face come to the surface. His patience is now tested when a huge storm slaps the boat with violent waves. And even the diary that was keeping him sane flies away. As both Parker and Pi struggle to stay on, Pi asks the god for his mercy and instructs Parker to do the same. However, Parker is barely holding on for his dear life. Pi then asks God why is he scaring the only companion he has left. As the storm subsides, Pi drinks the rainwater and offers some to Parker as well, but Parker's condition doesn't seem good. Hopelessly, Pi caresses Parker and gets ready to let go. When he wakes up, he finds that the boat has arrived at a lush island that is full of edible plants. The two go inside the jungle, which is housed with a large colony of meek rats, and there are small lakes on the ground. Pi goes to swim in one of the lakes while Parker feeds on the meek rats. As night arrives, all the meek rats rush to climb on the trees, and Parker and Pi also follow them. 
They watch as the lake water turns glowy and the fish start to erode. From a distance, the island now looks like a female body. Pai realizes that it isn't safe to stay there as the island turns hostile at night, turning the water into acid and deterring all the life forms on it. He collects the food supplies for both Parker and himself and whistles for Parker to come over. Parker follows the sound and the two continue their journey to the sea. At present, Pai remarks that people have tried to look for the island, but it has simply vanished. After sailing for a long period of time, Pai finally reaches land. As he lies on the sand, Parker walks away towards the jungle, and Pai still wonders how Parker couldn't feel even a little bit attached to him. As Pai is found by some local people, they take him away, and Pai cries for the last straw of the family that he has lost. At the hospital, some detectives investigate what happened. Pai gives them the entire account of the events that occurred, but they don't think he is telling the truth. He then fabricates another story to suit their convenience. He says that four people, Pai, his mother, the chef, and the Buddhist sailor were able to be rescued through the lifeboat. The Buddhist sailor injured his leg from the fall to the boat. The chef amputated the sailor's leg in an attempt to save him, but the sailor still died. Chef then uses the sailor's corpse to catch some fish, which doesn't sit right with mother as she confronts him for his unethical ways. The chef instead eats the sailor's body with little to no empathy. A while later, Pai accidentally sets a turtle free and the chef unleashes his wrath on him. Mother defends Pai against chef, but gets killed by him instead. This enrages Pai to the extent that he kills the chef the next day. Since then, Pai has been sailing in the lifeboat all alone until he is rescued. The detectives don't like this second story either. Whereas the author who has approached Pai is able to draw similarities between the animals in the first story and the characters in the second story. As the zebra portrays the Buddhist sailor, the hyena is the chef, the orangutan is the mother, and the tiger, Parker, is Pai's own wrath. Pai asks the writer which story he prefers better, and the writer says he likes the one with Parker. Pai's family soon arrives, and the author concludes that his story has a happy ending after all he has faced during the voyage. So what do you think about this one? And which story do you believe? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more for movie shortens, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified about when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.